Good morning, class. I'm Mrs. Kaka Abdullahi. I shall be facilitating ACC 102. And our topic for the day is final account of a trading firm. Final account is simply nothing but the trading profit and loss account and the balance sheet of a trading firm. And a trading firm is a firm that deals either with the sale or purchase of goods, which could either be in credit or in cash. And the main aim of a trading firm is to maximize profit. Although final account, irrespective of whether a trading firm is manufacturing wants any kind of final account, the main objective of final account is to provide accounting information to the different users of this information. Before going into in-depth explanation of what final account is, you need to have an understanding of the basic adjustment in final account because usually this adjustment usually gives students so, have a, especially in exam condition because without an understanding of this adjustment you will not be able to solve any question in final account and this basic adjustment are simply nothing but we have issues relating to depreciation, bad debt, we have provision for bad and doubtful debt. We also have issues relating to provision. We have issues relating to provision for reserves and we have accruals and prepayment. We also have loss and gain on the disposal of fees asset. These are the basic issues you need to understand before going into final account of any nature, not only of a trading firm, because they usually come as additional information attached to whichever question you'll be solving in final account. And without an understanding of these issues, you will not be able to prefer any kind of final account of any nature. So we start with the first one, issues relating to depreciation. Before going into it, we need to have an understanding of what depreciation is. Depreciation in accounting is simply nothing. The reduction or decrease in the value of a fixed asset because mostly it is fixed assets that are subject to depreciation. Fixed assets are items like our furniture and fittings, plant and machinery, our motor vehicles, even our computers. They are all examples of fixed assets. Even land, we have land and building too. They are all examples of fixed assets. So most of these assets, after a particular period, that is after subject to certain time, maybe after using this asset for a particular period, you find out that the value of those assets will depreciate. For example, simply even our furniture that we use, whether in the office or in our homes or in maybe in school, you find out that from the day you purchase or you acquire those assets, even though it's after a year or even months, you find out that the value of that asset will, di will diminish because it will tend to decrease. So once you have any asset that has been used after a particular period, that reduction in the value of that asset is simply termed as depreciation. Even our motor vehicles that we use, for example, if you can buy a car maybe after two, three or four years, depending, and you want to dispose that motor vehicle, we now said that motor vehicle is subject to what depreciation. So definitely, when you are disposing such asset, the value cannot be the same as when you acquire those assets. 
So in accounting, we made provision for depreciation for any asset that had been subject to use, depending on the lifespan of the asset. Before you provide for depreciation, there are certain things that you need to know that has to be provided. Things like, one, you have the cost of that asset will be given to you, then a percentage which will be charged for that depreciation too will also be provided for. Then if there's any scrap value, scrap value is also known as salvage value, it will be provided, but it's not always that. If there's any, it will also be provided for. For example, let's say what scrap value is simply is, for example, if you acquire a motor vehicle and you want to dispose it, maybe the windscreen or part of the vehicle has been damaged. That damage is what we term as scrap of salvage value. So when you are disposing that motor vehicle, you know that that damage will, apart from the depreciation, it will also reduce the value of that motor vehicle. So that's what we mean by scrap or salvage value. Salvage value is simply when an asset has been damaged or deteriorated to certain value. When disposing that asset, it also tends to reduce the value of that asset. So once you are providing for the position, you have to re reduce that salvage or scrap value for the cost of the asset. So for the purpose of this, our course, even though we have different method of providing for depreciation but basically will be restricted to the two basic methods which is importantly the straight line method of depreciation or the fees instrumented method and we have the reducing balance or diminishing value method so these are the two basic methods we'll be looking at so we we'll start with the first one the straight line or the fixed instrumented method. As the name implies, the straight line. The straight line method of depreciation is very simple because I told you before you compete for depreciation, the cost of the asset will be provided for the percentage, the scrap value, if any, and the lifespan of that asset. So you need these four basic information before you compete for depreciation. So the straight line method of depreciation is usually simple. It's simply by dividing the cost of the asset all over the lifespan of the asset. For example, let's say you have an asset that costs 100,000 and it has been subject to three years usage. So that is the lifespan. So it would be 100,000 all over the three years. So that is the lifespan. But where the asset is subject to a scrap or salvage value, the formula for computing for depreciation will now be the cost of that fixed asset minus the scrap or salvage value all over the lifespan. And you could also charge depreciation direct on the cost whereby you are given only a percentage if a lifespan is not provided. For example, you have an asset that will say maybe costing 50000 and the percentage to be provided for is like, let's say, 5%. So what you do is just to charge that 5% of 50000 So this is simply the straight line method of the position. It's very simple. There's no difficulties in computing for the position using the straight line method. But whereby an asset has its salvage value, example, where you have a machinery or motor vehicle, let's say, costing a hundred thousand, and this is salvage or scrap value of ten thousand. So, what you do before computing for that deposition, you have to subtract that salvage value from the cost of that asset. So, it would be simply say, like ten thousand minus from the cost that is a hundred thousand, where you have left, you have ninety thousand, then you divide it by the lifespan. If the lifespan depending, because in the question, if we are using lifespan, the lifespan will be provided for it could be two, three, four, five, or even ten years. So you now simply divide it by the lifespan to get 
with the position for that particular system. Then we now move to the next. I think these are basically two methods. The next method that you need to know is the reducing balance or the diminishing value. Because as the method said, simply reducing balance or diminishing value. The reducing balance or diminishing value here annually the value for depreciation the cost will keep reducing that is for example given the example we've used before let's say we have a plant or machinery costing a hundred thousand it is only in the first year that you charge depreciation on the cost subsequent years you don't charge the depreciation direct on the cost of that fixed asset. What we'll do is that the value of that asset will keep reducing based on the first year charge. For example, if we have, I said, a plant and machinery costing 100,000 and the percentage charge for that depreciation, let's say, is maybe 10 or 20 percent. So in the first year, it will be 10 percent of the 100,000 which when you compete, you get 20,000. So in the second year, what you do is you subtract the first year depreciation from the total cost of the fixed asset. So for example, if we have 20,000 as a percentage charge in the first year, in the second year, you now see that the value of depreciation, the cost will now reduce from 100,000 to 80,000 because you subtract the 20,000 from 80,000. So what you let you have left for the cost, it will now be 80,000. So you now charge the percentage, but the percentage is fees. You don't change the percentage. It is only the cost of the fees asset that will keep reducing annually till you exhaust the whole period given to you. So that's how we compete the reducing balance or diminishing value. But at times you find it as written down value because the value we keep reducing till we exhaust the whole lifespan of that asset. So that's how you compete for that using the percentage. So after competing for the asset, the next thing is because once you have depreciation, depreciation is usually term as an expense in the profit and loss account. After computing for the depreciation, you need to record it into the ledger account. Uh, because, and all information concerning the adjustment in the final account are usually treated twice. You treat it in the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. So before you record it into the profit and loss account, because the profit and loss account is an account that deals basically with all our expenses and income. The possession charge is an expense in the profit and loss account, which will now reduce the value of that asset. At the end of the day, because it will not, when you take to the balance sheet, the value will not be the same as when you acquire that asset. So what you do is you open a ledger account, even though you could do this without opening the ledger account. Maybe when we take a question, we you see because the final account, we have two ways of presenting the final account. So based on whichever method we are doing, maybe when we're solving the question, you will not see. So that asset will not be recorded. You need to open a small ledger account, just T, we call them small, small ledger account, one for the asset, one for the depreciation, and the profit and loss account. So when you open the ledger account, for example, the cost of the machinery, it will be recorded there, the actual cost of the fixed asset will have a debit entry in the asset account while the depreciation that has been charged will be a credit entry in that account so because in simply i think we've been taught the in principle of debit entry every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry 
So the depreciation charge being a credit entry in the asset account when being transferred to the profit and loss account, we now find out that it's going to be what? A debit entry. That is to by applying to double entry principle. So like the depreciation we've computed for in the question above in the example, let's say we compute a depreciation of 10% giving us and uh, that is 10% of 100,000 we had 18,000 and the cost of that asset was 100,000. So you now find out that taking that asset to the balance sheet because it will reduce the actual cost. What you have now at depreciation is 18,000. This 18,000 will form part of your expenses in the P and L account. That is the profit and loss account. So it will be computed with all other expenses before determining our net profit in the profit and loss account, which will later, because in the profit and loss account, the depreciation or the provision for depreciation is having a debit entry so when going to the balance sheet now it will have what a credit entry in your balance sheet under the column for fixed asset that is if you are presenting your account using the t account format but if you are not presenting your account using the t account format you're using the vertical format is a different format that you don't need to open the ledger account but when we solve the equation you see that because we'll be taking the two format because you are allowed to use either the T format or the vertical format. That is, so that is all about the depreciation for this asset because you understand this better maybe when we solve equation but you need to just have an understanding of what the depreciation expense is. Then the next we have is the provision for Okay, the, the provision for bad debt in account. The nice issue in our at basic adjustment for final account is the issues relating to bad debt, which shall be treated in our next class. Hopefully, we shall be meeting on Thursday, hopefully. So when we meet, we shall be looking at issues relating to bad debt and the provision for bad and doubtful debtors. Thank you very much. Is there any question?